Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we are going to discuss the nine circles of hell as they are presented in the Divine Comedy. Let's get into it. The Divine Comedy is a 14th century epic poem written by Italian poet Dante Alighieri, consisting of three parts, Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. It is an allegorical journey through the realms of the afterlife, hell, purgatory, and heaven, serving as a reflection on human sin, morality, and redemption. The protagonist, Dante, finds himself lost in a dark forest, symbolizing spiritual confusion. The Roman poet Virgil, sent by Dante's beloved Beatrice, guides him through hell and purgatory, while Beatrice herself leads him through heaven. The narrative explores the various punishments and rewards experienced by souls based on their earthly deeds and spiritual growth. In Inferno, Dante and Virgil journey through the nine circles of hell, each representing different categories of sin, with punishments tailored to the severity of the sins committed. Dante encounters historical and mythological figures, using their stories to explore themes of divine justice and the consequences of human actions and behavior. Purgatorio, the second part of the poem, is set on Mount Purgatory, a seven-terraced mountain representing the seven deadly sins. As souls ascend the mountain, they undergo purification through penance and spiritual growth. Dante's journey through Purgatory serves as a metaphor for the process of overcoming sin and embracing virtue. Finally, Paradiso depicts Dante's ascent through the celestial spheres of heaven. Guided by Beatrice, Dante encounters various saints and theologians, exploring the nature of divine love and wisdom. The journey culminates in a vision of God, emphasizing the ultimate goal of spiritual enlightenment and union with the divine. The Divine Comedy is a complex work that blends theology, philosophy, and political commentary. Written in the vernacular Italian of Dante's time, it was groundbreaking for its use of language and its influence on the development of Italian literature. The poem's vivid imagery, engaging narrative, and profound exploration of the human condition have ensured its lasting impact and enduring legacy as a cornerstone of Western literature. We are now going to spend the rest of the video going over the nine circles of hell one at a time beginning with the first circle, the least severe, and finishing with the lowest, a realm of ice devoid of God's grace where Satan is imprisoned in a frozen lake. 1. Limbo The first circle houses virtuous pagans and unbaptized souls who led morally upright lives but were not saved due to a lack of faith. In Limbo, they reside in a castle surrounded by beautiful landscapes experiencing a lesser form of eternal peace. However, they are denied heaven and the full presence of God. Notable residents include classical philosophers like Aristotle and Socrates, poets like Homer, and legendary leaders and heroes like Julius Caesar and Hector of Troy. Limbo represents the consequences of living without divine guidance and the limitations of human reason without faith. 2. Lust the second circle punishes those who succumb to lust and carnal desires. Souls are endlessly tossed about by violent, stormy winds, symbolizing the turbulent and uncontrollable nature of lust. The whirlwind represents the way lustful individuals were swept away by their passions in life, leading them to neglect reason and virtue. 3. Gluttony In the third circle, gluttonous souls wallow in foul, putrid slush and are tormented by the monstrous, three-headed dog, Cerberus. The putrid slush represents the cold, numbing, and empty nature of overindulgence in food and drink. Cerberus, with its insatiable appetite, symbolizes the never-ending hunger that plagues the gluttonous. The punishment in this circle reflects the belief that excessive consumption degrades the human spirit and prevents individuals from pursuing higher moral and spiritual goals. 4. Greed The fourth circle is reserved for those who are consumed by greed, whether through hoarding or squandering wealth. Souls in this circle are divided into two groups, 
constantly fighting each other while pushing massive weights. The clash of weights symbolizes the material desires and conflicts that characterize the lives of the greedy. The eternal struggle represents the futility of pursuing material possessions over spiritual values. 5. Wrath In the fifth circle, wrathful souls are trapped in the muddy waters of the river Styx, constantly attacking one another in a state of rage. The murky, suffocating environment symbolizes the blinding and destructive nature of anger. The souls submerged beneath the water's surface represent those who silently nurtured their wrath, leading to a corrosive effect on their souls. This punishment demonstrates that uncontrolled anger not only harms others, but also poisons the individual's spiritual well-being. 6. Heresy The sixth circle punishes heretics who denied or distorted core Christian beliefs. They are confined within flaming sepulchers, symbolizing the eternal separation from God and the light of divine truth that their heresy caused. These fiery graves represent the spiritual damage and darkness resulting from the rejection of Christian doctrine. The punishment emphasizes the importance of faith and the consequences of denying divine wisdom. 7. Violence the seventh circle is divided into three rings, punishing various forms of violence. The outer ring punishes those who are violent towards others. The sinners are submerged in a river of boiling blood called Phlegathon, with the depth of their immersion depending on the severity of their sins. Centaurs patrol the river and shoot arrows at those attempting to escape. The punishment symbolizes the destructive and consuming nature of violence. The middle ring punishes those who committed violence against themselves, particularly suicides. These souls are transformed into gnarled, thorny trees, which are continuously torn apart and fed upon by harpies, mythological creatures with the body of a bird and the face of a woman. The violent and painful transformation into trees represents the sinner's rejection of their own human form and their inability to participate in the natural order of life. In addition, the harpy's attacks symbolize the perpetual suffering and self-inflicted harm of those who committed suicide. The innermost ring punishes those who are violent against God, blasphemers, against nature, sodomites, and against art or industry, usurers. These sinners are forced to endure a desolate, burning plain of sand with fiery flakes raining down from the sky. Blasphemers lie on the ground, cursing God, while sodomites wander the plain in endless circles. Usurers sit on the sand, weighted down by heavy bags of money around their necks, representing their greed and exploitation in life. This punishment emphasizes the consequences of defying divine and natural order, as well as the destructive impact of usury on society. 8. Fraud the eighth circle, known as Malabulja, consists of ten ditches that punish different forms of fraud. In the first ditch, seducers and panderers are whipped by demons as they march in opposite directions, symbolizing their manipulation and exploitation of others' desires for their own benefit. In the second ditch, flatterers are immersed in a pit of excrement, representing the filth and insincerity of their false praise and deceitful words. In the third ditch, simoniacs, who sold ecclesiastical positions and indulgences, are placed headfirst in narrow, upside-down wells filled with fire, reflecting their perversion of spiritual authority. In the fourth ditch, sorcerers, astrologers, and false prophets have their heads twisted backwards on their bodies, forcing them to walk backwards symbolizing their distorted vision of the future and fraudulent claims. In the fifth ditch, corrupt politicians, barriters, are submerged in boiling pitch, representing the sticky and corrupt nature of their dealings, while demons tear them apart if they try to escape. In the sixth ditch, hypocrites wear heavy, gilded, lead cloaks, appearing beautiful but crushing the wearer illustrating the weight of their deceit and superficial appearances. In the seventh ditch, 
Thieves are tormented by snakes and reptiles that constantly bite and transform them, symbolizing the thieves' violation of property rights and their own unstable nature. In the eighth ditch, fraudulent advisors like Ulysses are encased in individual columns of flame, reflecting their burning desires to deceive and manipulate others for personal gain. In the ninth ditch, sowers of discord and scandal are dismembered and mutilated by a sword-wielding demon, symbolizing the divisions and strife they caused in life. In the tenth ditch, falsifiers, including counterfeiters, perjurers, and impersonators, suffer from various diseases and afflictions, representing the corruption and decay they spread through their deceit. 9. Treachery the ninth and final circle of hell is reserved for those who have committed the gravest sin, betrayal of trust towards family, country, guests, or benefactors. This desolate realm is characterized by a vast frozen lake known as Cocytus, within which the souls of the damned are eternally encased. The depths of their icy imprisonment reflect the severity of their treachery. Condemned to eternal isolation, these souls symbolize the cold heartlessness inherent in their betrayal and the resulting estrangement from human compassion and divine love. The ninth circle is divided into four regions, each dedicated to punishing a specific type of treachery. Kaina, the first region, is designated for those who betrayed their family members. These souls are frozen in ice up to their necks, rendering them immobile and silent reflecting their cold and heartless actions towards their kin. Antonora, the second region, is reserved for those who betrayed their country or political party. These individuals are frozen in ice up to their heads, their faces exposed to the biting winds, symbolizing the eternal pain and isolation caused by their treason. Tolumia, the third region, punishes those who betrayed their guests or hosts. These sinners lie supine in the ice, their faces visible, but their tear-filled eyes frozen shut, signifying the coldness and cruelty of their betrayal. Judica, the fourth and final region, is reserved for those who betrayed their benefactors or masters. These souls are fully encased in ice, their bodies contorted into twisted and distorted shapes, representing the perversion of loyalty and trust they committed. At the center of the ninth circle lies Satan, the archetypal traitor, who dared to defy God's supremacy. He is eternally trapped within the ice, his massive form a testament to the profound consequences of treachery. In a gruesome display of poetic justice, Satan ceaselessly gnaws on the souls of history's most notorious betrayers, Judas Iscariot, who sold out Jesus Christ, and Brutus and Cassius who orchestrated the assassination of Julius Caesar. Their fates serve as a harrowing reminder of the gravity of their sins and the perversion of divine order that treachery represents. After traversing the nine circles of hell and witnessing the various punishments of the damned, Dante and Virgil reach the center of hell where Lucifer, the ultimate traitor, is trapped. To exit hell and continue their journey towards purgatory, Dante and Virgil must pass through the center of the earth. With Virgil's guidance, Dante climbs down Lucifer's gigantic frozen body, which physically represents the culmination of all sin. As they descend, they must navigate the treacherous icy terrain, which symbolizes the struggle to overcome the sinful influences that had led Dante astray in life. Upon reaching the Earth's core, Dante and Virgil experience a change in orientation as they transition from descending to ascending, no longer moving down through hell, but beginning to move upwards towards purgatory. This transformation symbolizes a crucial turning point in Dante's journey, marking the shift from despair and sin to hope and redemption. By climbing upwards and distancing themselves from Lucifer, Dante demonstrates his determination to confront and overcome his past mistakes while actively seeking spiritual growth and enlightenment. Emerging from the depths of hell, Dante and Virgil reach the base of Mount Purgatory, 
located on an island formed by the displacement of rocks when Lucifer fell from heaven. Here, Dante embarks on the next phase of his journey, ascending Mount Purgatory to continue his spiritual transformation and purification. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.